Did you know that some research suggests that it takes just a tenth of a second for us to start determining traits in another human being? Now that's very fast, but a lot of data says seven seconds. We have seven seconds in terms and regards to our first impression. And why should we care about this data, especially in a job interview? Because it's really hard to turn it around after seven seconds. So what does that mean? They're either validating after those seven seconds that they like you or confirming that they don't like you throughout the rest of the interview. So in this video, our focus is just to talk about those first seven seconds. And there is a lot to uncover. And we're definitely going to take this from a video interview perspective because the vast majority of interviews right now are happening via video. Item one is practice. The only way you can guarantee that you get all of these first impression items right is just to practice with another human being. And it's just something I wanted to highlight in the beginning of this video. It's something that I want you to be thinking through as we're talking through all of these items. So item two is your physical setup. There is a lot to consider here. And surprisingly, a couple of these items are overlooked. Some of them are common sense, but let's just dive in. One is Wi-Fi. This is a common one that I see from candidates and from my clients. If you are going into the interview process and you have slow Wi-Fi, consider just upgrading while you're going through the interview process. Obviously, it can be great to hardwire in too, but the vast majority of us are using Wi-Fi. Now, you can test your Wi-Fi speed with using sites like fast.com, speedtest.net. I like at least 100 Mbps. That's guaranteeing constant good connection. Now you can run a video all the way down to three Mbps, but I really want you to focus in on getting that number up to 100. This will just 100% guarantee no streaming issues. And again, turning off any devices that are also connecting to the Wi-Fi, getting as close to the router as possible, just simplistic items I want you to think about. Let's talk about the background. Now I know in 2023, almost all the platforms have a background image or blur feature that you can use. And I think it's okay to use these now. Uh, it's less fuzzy, your head looks we less weird than it used to, but I actually still prefer no blur just because there can be some funkiness with using these backgrounds or the blur feature. So what does a clean background look like? Ideally, you really have nothing going on in the background that will distract. You want a clean wall or simple furniture or no sense of disorganization behind you at all. The interviewer, your interviewer is already massively distracted. So let's not distract them um, and take away from us by giving them things to look at in the background, think about in the background. And just remember, messy background can show a lack of preparation, disorganization, etc. Let's talk a little bit about video software. As you're coming into these interviews, just ask yourself, hey, have I ever used this software before? Yeah, most of us have used Google Meets or Zoom or WebEx or Teams, but we don't use all of them all the time. So just make sure that when you practice with your friend or family member that you're using the software they use, it's just really important that you're not fumbling around with the video software as you're trying to get started in the interview. So for example, I'm most used to using Zoom. So I'm able to get the person in the camera angle the way I want and get all my docs and information set up. But sometimes when I use Meets or Teams, it's a little different. So you're really gonna want that set up right because maybe you want a few very high level notes on the left. Maybe you want your Google stopwatch on the right. So just really important to get the video software right. I know it seems very simplistic, but it's very overlooked in terms of the feedback I've seen in articles and videos. Lighting. This is actually a really, really big misstep that I see all the time. So what's the best way to get the best light? Always with your face towards the window. And that's why I shoot all my videos with my face towards the window. So I have some good natural light coming into my face. You can see my eyes. The eyes are the most important thing. And when the lighting's not good, it's hard to see your eyes. It's hard to make a good first impression and connect with that person. You can also buy something like a cheap ring light um, on Amazon or any of these other platforms, $10, $15 US. That's going to bring some light into your face too. Watch out for pocket lighting in the ceiling that creates a glare on your face, on your head or behind your head. That can also be incredibly distracting. 
And then one other item, if you wear glasses, and hey, a bunch of us do wear glasses, just make sure that there's no glare on your glasses. Again, if I can't see your eyes, it's gonna have an impact on your overall success. Let's talk about the camera angle. This also, along with lighting, seems to be a critical and common error. And I just wanna talk a little bit about it. So we should be straight on with our cameras. We shouldn't be looking down, looking up, our camera should not be on a second screen where we're looking to the side. We are never actually looking at the person. A couple of other items to note are, I use zoom a lot, for example. So where my webcam is, I'm gonna put that person's head right below the camera so I can actually look at them and not look at the camera because I want you to be looking at them and adapting to their body language. In an interview, we don't wanna just stare at the camera because we might be picking up on a lot of those body language cues, which make up a larger percentage than our verbal cues. The last thing to think about when setting this up is, are you going to sit and stand? So you really wanna get the lighting and camera right, depending on whether you're gonna sit and stand. That's a personal decision um, that you're really gonna need to make now. Standing can bring some really good energy, a better presence. I always do interviews and shoot these videos and do my live standing. So practice it with somebody else. Do you have the energy to stand? Do you prefer sitting? And then you can, you know, play around with the lighting and camera based on those items. Outside noise. Okay, this is something that we can prepare for. Do we have little children? Do we have other people in the household we haven't told about our interview? Do we have a dog that's a little anxious and likes to bark a lot? Have your significant other take the dog to the office for the day or go for a long walk. Have your kids in daycare. Just any outside noise can really hurt a first impression and it can be distracting to you as well. So it's just something to be aware of and again, can really be a negative really quickly into the interview. The last piece that's not gonna be impacted in the first seven seconds, but I just want it to be part of your setup. I want you to have a blank piece of paper, a pen. I also want you to have your cheat sheet. I'll link to that video up above. And then a couple of other things I like to just have in my physical setup. I like a glass of water and maybe a box of Kleenex because I tend to get very cold and sniffly and if you keep touching your face with your hands, it can be distracting, but if you use a Kleenex, it can give a just a little bit better impression. Again, we shouldn't be doing that in the first seven seconds, but just a couple of other items I wanted to note. Let's get into item three, appearance. Whether you like it or not, interviewers will judge you on your appearance. This is 100% guaranteed, they're human. They're gonna do it, so you just need to know that and understand that before going in. So grooming is huge. They're going to judge the way you look, so top to bottom, you just wanna be buttoned up. Now, of course, it's a video interview, so you can have pajama pants on, but just make sure your hair, your makeup, you blow your nose, you brush your teeth, and I just would strongly encourage you to look in the mirror five to 10 minutes, really 10 minutes before the interview and just make sure everything looks okay. Um, sometimes we had a snack and we have food in our teeth or something else might, might come up. So just be aware of it. Another basic one and very common one is clothes. Always find out from your POC, your recruiter or hiring manager, what is the dress and preferred dress for the job interview. I know this is super straightforward. Tech is casual, so you might just wear like a simple button down or something even more casual. Banking finance, you might wear a suit, but just make sure your clothes are ironed, they're pressed. You really look like you're all buttoned up because some people are really rigid about this stuff. Not all interviewers will care, but some will. Lastly, one of the items that is mentioned quite a bit online, but I think is missed in a lot of these videos and articles is wear neutral colors. Remember, our interviewers are already distracted. We're not trying to distract them more with a bad physical setup. We're not trying to distract them with really funky bright colors because they might just start thinking about the colors you're wearing and stop listening to you. The best neutral colors are typically white, black, blue, and gray. Um, so we just want to keep that really, really simplistic. It's hard to it's hard to state, but interviewers are biased, so let's eliminate any opportunity for them to negatively judge us. And at this point, you may be like, Jeff, this is so over the top. I wouldn't want to work at any company that's thinking about all these things, but it's not really about the company. It's about the interviewers. 
they have unconscious bias even you know unconscious bias they're not aware of it so let's just get all these items right item four body language so let's quickly address the most important attributes but let's double down on what you can do in the first seven seconds so chin up shoulders back you'll see i always speak with my chin up and my shoulders back those two items are going to be really critical because they exude confidence and health slunching down slouching down that can be a lack of confidence a lack of health issue <clears throat> next we have to talk about smiling smiling is contagious it's scientifically proven that we are hardwired to mimic the expressions of others so when you come in with a big smile it's going to be really important and so how do you do this how do you come in excited when there's anxiety and nervousness coming into an interview well you think like you're meeting a celebrity that you've always wanted to meet or you're seeing that long lost family member or friend and you hop on and you just have this big contagious smile even if somebody's in a bad mood again scientifically we can pull them out of it a little bit so always remember smiling is going to be critical coming in eye contact maintain a really good eye contact for the first seven seconds then you can look away we don't want to be locked in because that can be really weird too so you're kind of looking away and coming back but in those first seven seconds really really dig in smile have that good eye contact it can be important now you can see i use my hands a little bit first seven seconds let's not introduce our hands let's keep our hands down because we don't know our interviewer yet now if they use their hands a lot mirror them and use your hands as well but let's bring our hands out of the equation to start that's going to be really helpful as well it won't act as a distraction in the first seven seconds item five what to say there's just a couple of items that are going to go a really long way when you first meet somebody first things first repeat their name there's lots of science and data to say that people like their name repeated. And then I also like gratitude. So if the interviewer came in and said, let's imagine our interviewer, Sue, always Sue. Sue comes in and says, hi, Jeff, how are you today? I'm going to say, Sue, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking and for taking the time to speak with me today. How are you? That's our seven seconds. So you come in with a smile. Sue asks you a nice question. You say you're doing great, which is positivity. Then you show gratitude. Then you ask about them. That's going to create a great first impression. And that is our first seven seconds. So using those three items is absolutely going to be the key to success. The one other item I want to note, do not mention, hey, I looked you up on LinkedIn and I loved X, Y, and Z about you not a good way to start some interviewers do not like it when you research them it's not a high percentage but it's a high enough percentage to just say it's risky let's avoid it just bring in gratitude ask them how they are thank them for their time and that's going to be the keys to success in those first seven seconds mm -hmm. item six we got to do it on time i simply just we can't skip this item get on the video five minutes early and that's also a great time hey let's say there's some sort of technical hiccup like your camera isn't working like obviously i want you to practice all this stuff but five minutes gives you enough time to restart and get everything settled right so five minutes early just get on there and you're not really creating a burden for them if you hop on the video five minutes early it just shows you're prepared i wouldn't do more than that but five minutes is okay I know that this is getting way into the weeds. The first seven seconds are incredibly critical for your success. Make sure you take all these steps and good luck.